The Admiralen class were a flotilla of eight Dutch destroyers with a surprisingly complicated design history. Back at the start of World War I, destroyers and torpedo boats were generally fairly small ships of a few hundred tons, with torpedo launchers and varying levels of gunpowder, although something around three to four guns of between three and four inches in calibre was a fairly common armament. The war itself had put something of a hold on destroyer design in Europe, but modifications and size escalation were inevitable, if of a somewhat experimental nature. To illustrate, the last pre-war Royal Navy destroyers had been about a thousand tons, with a top speed of 29 knots and an armament of three single four-inch guns. A couple of AA guns were thrown in, as were two twin torpedo launchers. The last class of wartime destroyers was about 200 tons heavier, five knots faster, and had picked up an extra main gun, as well as being able to sail almost twice as far. Some examples even upgraded to a pair of triple launchers instead of twins. Drawing all this together in the 1920s, the Admiralty had tried to come up with a new design that incorporated all wartime lessons. Two ships would be launched, HMS Ambushcade and HMS Amazon, built by Yarrow and Thornycroft respectively, which were two of the leading firms when it came to destroyer design. These ships were heavier still, at between 1,600 and 1,800 tonnes fully loaded, capable of 37 knots and armed with four single 4.7-inch or 120mm guns, a couple of AA guns, and two triple torpedo launchers. So, that's all very interesting, Drac, but what does any of this have to do with the Dutch? Well doesn't involve a second Medway raid with the Dutch absconding with another collection of British warships, much, I'm sure, to the disappointment of our Dutch listeners. But it is at this point that the Royal Netherlands Navy appears in our account. Like a number of other smaller navies who had watched the larger fleets kicking the living daylights out of each other for most of the 1910s, they were eager to upgrade their own fleets, which were almost entirely pre-war designs, taking advantage of the hard-won lessons of the conflict without having to go all through, through all the screaming and the explosions and the dying part of things. In this particular case, the ships that needed replacing were the Wolf class, 500-ton destroyers of 30 knots, four single 3-inch guns, and a grand total of two torpedo tubes. Contracting with Yarrow, the builders of HMS Ambushcade, they took that design and made a few minor changes, resulting in the Admiralen class. Amusingly, for a bunch of ships ordered to a British design, they were all named for Dutch admirals who had spent most of their careers fighting the British in the various Anglo-Dutch wars of the 17th century. Eight ships in total were built, and since apparently my pronunciation of Dutch is especially bad, I will put the actual spelling of each ship name underneath their picture, so those who understand the language actually have some vague idea of who and what I'm talking about. The ships were, in order, De Reuter, later renamed to Van Ghent, Evertsen, Courtenaire, Piet Hien, Van Galen, Witte de Vith, Bankert, and Van Nez. The ships were driven to a top speed of 36 knots by a pair of screws which were connected to engines giving 31,000 shaft horsepower. They would displace just over 1,600 tonnes fully loaded, and could also carry the rather interesting Van Berkel W-A float plane, which had an inverted tail to give the rear gunner a better field of fire. Beyond these common characteristics, there were two groups of four ships within the overall class, each group having a different armament. The first group carried a main battery of four single 4.7-inch Bofors guns, a couple of 3-inch Bofors anti-aircraft guns, four single 50 caliber machine guns, and a pair of triple torpedo launchers. The second group also carried four single 4.7-inch guns, although these were made by Sidirius, the local Dutch subsidiary of Krupp. 
along with a single 3-inch Sidereus anti-aircraft gun and four Vickers 40mm anti-aircraft cannon along with the machine guns and torpedo tubes as same as the first group. The Sidereus guns could elevate slightly higher than the Bofors, but the 40mm Vickers had issues elevating especially high until eventually in 1939 this was fixed, allowing them to take on targets beyond minimum altitude. Overall, the ships were a very capable interwar destroyer design, coming into fleet service in 1928 and spending most of their active careers in the Dutch East Indies. Unfortunately, this meant that with the exception of Van Galen, they were all there when the Japanese began their advance through the Pacific. Van Galen was, however, the first ship to be sunk, helping to defend Rotterdam against advancing German forces in May 1940. She was targeted by German bombers and sunk in the river, her wreck being salvaged and scrapped during the occupation. The rest of the class would be lost over the course of just a couple of weeks at the start of 1942, with the renamed Van Ghent being the first to go, running aground during a raid against Japanese shipping and having to be scuttled by Bankert on the 15th of February. Next to go was Van Nez two days later on the 17th. It fought a heroic two-hour battle alone against aircraft from the carrier Rougeau in defence of a troop ship finally succumbing to a pair of direct hits. Another two days passed, and it was the turn of Piet Hien, which was torpedoed by the Japanese destroyer Asashio in the Battle of Badung Strait. February would close out with Air being hit by a torpedo from the cruiser Haguro during the Battle of the Java Sea on the 27th, and sinking almost instantly. March would see the final reckoning, with Evertsen sunk during the Battle of Sunda Strait after repeated encounters with the destroyers Murakumo and Shirakumo on the first of the month, and Vita de Vith being hit the same day in a separate attack by Japanese aircraft and being scuttled due to damage on the second. The second would also see the last survivor, Bankert, scuttled after damage sustained a week earlier during a Japanese air attack. She would actually be raised by the Japanese, partially repaired, and used as patrol boat number 106. What was left of the ship was then retrieved after the war and expended as a target in 1949. That's it for this video. Thanks for watching. If you have a comment or suggestion for a ship to review, let us know in the comments below. Don't forget to comment on the pinned post for dry dock questions.